Hello everyone, welcome to Practical GCP. So today, I would like to show you a super lightweight design for doing real-time ingestion on GCP. So it's a very exciting topic and I can't wait to tell you. But before we go into the solution, there's a few things you should know, right? So the first thing is that the PubSub BigQuery subscription is something been made uh, GA recently uh, on Google Cloud that you can directly set up a subscription to get data from PubSub into BigQuery with very minimum legwork, right? So I've got a YouTube video that I've showed you how this works. If you haven't seen it before, uh, have a look at on the top right corner of the screen and that's the link to the last YouTube video. And the second thing is at the time I made that video, the uh, JSON data type, right, which is a new data type for BigQuery that you can use to store semi-structured data with very good efficiency on lookups and searching, right? So, and now that JSON data type is in GA, I think it was announced in Google Cloud Next, uh, but that is now in GA, so you can use it on production. Uh, the third one is the most interesting one. So when I was crawling through LinkedIn today, I saw a guy called Robert uh, Salin. Uh, so what he has done is he actually said, oh, although the official documentation does not support the, you know, the pubs of BigQuery subscription, you know, to directly stream data into the JSON data type. But he actually tried it out and discovered um, it is actually possible to, instead of using the string columns, you can actually set the BigQuery columns, the data type for where the data of PubSub goes as the JSON data type. So, and this is so exciting. So uh, because I saw that post and thank you very much, Robert, and I just couldn't wait to try it out. Uh, so there I am, right? So let me show you what I've done. So first of all, I've uploaded uh, some new instructions on the readme. So this is where I did the first video and you can see that it's got the instructions from the previous place, right? So now I've added a new section called example without a topic schema. So you can always use the topic with the schema to get the data mapped into exact data type of you know whatever is coming from your message payload. But this way you can actually, uh, as you can see this, you can create a topic, you can create a data set, you can create a table, right? But here, it uses a schema that's stored in this uh, in this folder called BigQuery schemas. It says it's called generic with JSON data type. So that, if you have a look, the schema I put in here, right, is a very generic one. You got the subscription name, the message ID, the time of the message being published, the data, right? You can see the type of this column is actually JSON, right? And so does the attributes. So this is super important. And let me come back to this when I show you the design. And it's, 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 uh, it's really powerful to use this kind of generic schema to ingest data at scale. Here you can actually create a subscription, you know, then it will actually map all of these things uh, to, to automatically using this uh, BigQuery subscription into your BigQuery tables, actually into the JSON data type. So you can try this out with this code. And then this uses one of these, uh, so what it does, uh, if you haven't seen this before, is uh, basically, I've grabbed one of the existing large BigQuery tables in the uh, Google public data set and I converted lots of the BigQuery tables data into the JSON format and basically stream it back into the PubSub topic to kind of showcase the, uh, how the BigQuery subscription works, right? So, and I've tried this. So you can see earlier in the day, I actually pumped in uh, about, I think about half million messages into the, into the topic. And then this got streamed into the BigQuery table, which is here, right? As you can see, the data and attributes are the two different new columns that now, as Robert suggested, are the JSON data type. So if you look at the details, you can see that I've pumped quite a lot of data into here. Uh, and look at the pre by looking at the preview, right, you can see that all of these columns are populated, including the data column, which now is JSON and it actually contains the JSON data data, right, the data type, and has that in it. Um, so I've tried, also tried the attribute, you can see the first ones, you know, they don't have the attribute. But if I go to the ones I put in later, you can actually put in attributes, I'll explain this one why this is very important to have, right. You can see here is the origin, it's got the origin, and it's got the user, you know, blah, blah, blah. So that's the data you can attach to the, uh, to the message. Right. And 
if you look at the what you can do with this right so now with you can actually select any columns or all of the columns from this table uh, you can filter in this case look at you know you've got, you've got the attributes the origin that you can filter if I only interested in the ones that is not known and then I can also use the JSON dot notation you know you can see the, both of these columns right now I can do the dot notation which is not supported if you use the string column which you have to convert into the JSON type data type first and then before you use it but now it's very convenient you can actually just query the data in this particular way now let's look at this architecture right this is a very very lightweight deployment for getting data ingested in real time. And this is, again, designed both for operational use cases, which are real-time consumers that you can actually consume directly from the topic, and also at the same time for analytics, where like primarily utilize the BigQuery subscription uh, feature for PubSub, right? So I'll explain why I put this warning in there and what kind of mitigation options that you probably have to think about when using this solution. And just keep, for now, just keep in mind, this design, it utilizes the semi-structured data, right? And it does not care about the data schema. So there's pros and cons with this approach. It's simple, but there's a kind of, uh, there's a reasons why it's simple and it will work for some use cases, it will not work and probably not the best for some other use cases, right? So let's start from the left. You can see, um, so what I'm here and I'm mimicking is you've got three different services, right? So one is a viable application and there's two microservices. They all want to you know, send certain events, which you can use for all sorts of things in Google Cloud. So these can be on-prem, right? These can be in other cloud, but you actually have, can have a gateway to receive data from them. So the gateway API typically is very important to have this. You can use things like AppG um, to actually give you this capability, right? And then that is a kind of a lightweight service to uh, do a number of things such as you can rate limiting the, the, the you know the, the receiving of the messages and then you can do the authentication authorization at this layer and then you can also choose to do some validation so keep in mind we are talking about semi-structured data in here but if, what if someone sends you something that is, has the wrong encoding right something is not JSON so you can actually do some uh, encode some, so you can actually do some validation here, but that's not the main thing we want to do in this gateway API. So, but the other is much more important to have this gateway. So, and then the next thing you're going to have is basically, right, the single pub sub topic. So not multiple, just the single one. This is very important because you don't want to deploy, let's say if you have, you know, 20 different kinds of messages, you right, you don't really want to put them into 20 different topics, which you know, subsequently give you a lot more overhead that you have to deploy the service. But one thing I do want to keep in mind is there is something that in terms of the uh, the throughput that you can get, right, depending on the region you're at. Um, if you're on a small region, you can look at this later on. Um, if you're on a small region, uh, the throughput you can get is around 200 megabytes a second. So that's the maximum you can send like, at the same time. Uh, but for a much larger region or the multi-regional ones that you can actually get about, about one gigabytes a second in terms of throughput. So there's a quite big difference. So keep that in mind, because if you do have very large volume of data, you need to be careful not to hit the quotas. Um, so that's um, the single topic that you have in PubSub. So imagine the data you send, right? It could be in this kind of format. You can have the data, right? This is the exact schema. So the most important part is, you know, is you can send the message payload, um, but what the message is going to map into, right, on the topic itself, it's going to going to have, you know, it's going to use, it's going to turn into, right, it's going to turn into the data uh, column or field, which will contain the actual message you send from all of these services uh, in the upstream systems, and it will also have the attribute. So this is something really important, right, especially in the single topic design, that when you send a message, you can actually attach yeah, you can actually attach one or multiple attributes to indicate uh, what this message, right, where it come from, such as the origin. This is super important because if you look at the operational pipe for the streaming, like, so these can be, you know, subscription services. Uh, it can be, you know, push subscriptions, such as, you know, you go into call services on Cloud Run. So these can be microservices. You can have subscribers to basically, you know, consume them in an event stream and to send into other systems. So these are operational use cases, right? 
But the key is, if you have the attributes, you can actually filter by it. You can say, I only care about the things coming from the origin web application A. So this means you don't, you know, in your subscription, you don't actually get messages from the other microservices or other places you don't really care about, which is much cleaner. So you don't have to do the filtering at application level, which is much more efficient, right? So, but if you look at the other side, which is where the magic comes in with this, uh, the BigQuery um, subscription. So when you set this thing up with PubSub BigQuery subscription, um, it basically serves the, the pipe for the all the analytic use cases and dumping the data into BigQuery, right? So this is where, you know, we look at the schema earlier and then the two most important columns that we're dealing with is the data column, which now we mapped into JSON. And then the attributes column, which we have the, also the JSON data type, and that has the attribute that you attached to the message when it was sent, right? This is very important because not only we used the single PubSub topic design, but we're also using a single BigQuery table design, right? So what this means is all of your data, it doesn't matter where it comes from, there's this just one single table. Um, this is the idea I've got from, uh, you know, there's another video I made recently about the, uh, the, the log analytics feature. So I've put the link in there uh, at the top again, if you want to check that out. But that one is, this is where I got the idea from, like where, um, kind of Google Cloud is starting moving into, especially for some of these things, is actually there's lots of more concepts that you just have like of one single place, right? So you can access lots of different data, but you can filter it by things like the attribute in this particular case. And with this thing, right, you can easily identify the data you care about because you know which origin of the message it was sent from, so which you can easily, if you can see these three use cases, which could belong to three different teams that care about very, very different kind of things. And then they kind of query the same table, but actually filter by the message they're actually interested in, right? So that's, this is where it gets really interesting. But the, the reason this thing is very, very simple, right? Is because all you have to do is to deploy some kind of gateway, right? This one, you know, you can, you can just use AppG, you've got it, or you can just use a load balancer hood on, on top of Cloud Run. Um, on top of this, then that would actually give you, you know, some validation if you need it, an authentication authorization and rate limiting that you can implement in this kind of layer. Um, but in terms of the, so that's just the gateway, right? But in terms of the ingestion itself, is only you deploy one single topic, right? That's it. And then you deploy the uh, subscription, right? That's just the one, you know, gcloud command or, you know, one Terraform, uh, you know, piece of script that you can actually attach this. then it goes into your BigQuery table, right? So you do have to create the BigQuery tables yourself to make sure it has the correct data type, but there's just one table and one schema and it's completely generic. So that's it. So that's the solution that you've got in here. Um, and okay, now let's summarize what the, you know, the good and bad of this solution. Good, obviously this is super simple, very easy to deploy. You can get this up and running. I mean, the, the gateway might take a bit of time, right? But, but th this thing, you know, after the gateway itself, then, you know, in a couple of days, you can put it live, right? There's nothing, you know, really difficult about this. And you can even test it, you know, all the thing end to end. It, it took me like, you know, probably 30 minutes to put this whole thing, make this whole thing working. Um, and then the uh, other good thing about it is just a very simplified structure and services. You have one topic, right? And then one table, and that's all you've got. You've got everything in the same place. And that is very, very powerful. Oh, making sure your BigQuery table is partitioned, right? So when the data comes in, so you can actually combine the filtering of the, uh, of the search, you know, using the, using the, you know, the station types on the attributes plus the partitioning, right? So then you get the best of both the filtering and the cost saving using the partition itself. However, downside, there's a couple, right? So first of all, back to this warning, the data is semi-structured, right? So that means when you actually get it in, depending on how much validation you actually do at gateway level, this is interesting, right? So you can actually decide if it's, you know, super important, you can actually do more validation even to actually validate the message before it actually, you know, lands into the right place. And then for the other ones, you can actually reject it, right? If that's the case, um, or send it to a dead letter queue, which is probably a better solution. Um, but this solution, if you just kind of interested in to get a huge amount of data in, then obviously for semi-structured data, 
if you're not solving problem here, you're going to have to solve it later on, right? So the data is not modeled, it's not probably very well validated. So later on, when you start using the data, you might find the data quality issues on a later stage, which can be, you know, a bit of, little bit, bit of nightmare to, to debug and finding out what's going on. Uh, but this is why I'm saying, so from my perspective, I would probably not use this for something that is, uh, is super critical, or if there's lots of sensitive data in there. So that I would either use the, you know, put it into a different topic, and then map it with the actual schema, right? So because keep in mind, this is the schemaless solution, but there's also another one that you can look at my uh, back to the repository, the Git repository, that you can you can actually deploy a schema to the topic, right? So that has the validations built in into the topic itself. So when you actually get it into the BigQuery table, you know the, the structure is actually exactly mapped to every single column of your message, right? Uh, but you can also, you know, add some more validation on the on the areas that you actually care more about, right? So this this is the things that you can do. But it's it's quite a bit of overhead because you've got one gateway right in here, and then you know you could have deployed multiple multiple gateways depending on where the data come from. But again, if you add a lot of things in there, it become harder to maintain as a service. So the other thing is I want to emphasize the sensitive data. So because if you chuck it to the JSON, you know, just JSON column. So as far as I know, it doesn't support the row level uh, PI policy tags. Um, so, and then also at the same time, you know, you have lots of things that is mixed up in one column, right? So what that means is if there are a combination of multiple PI or sensitive data, even when you use DLP to detect it, it's going to tell you there's lots of things in it, right? There's a mixed data types. So how do you tag one single column with multiple t policy tags? Not so easy, right? So I would say, so in summary, I would say this is really powerful for something really simple. And if you have high volume data, you know, that you can actually, uh, you don't actually care too much about it if, if the quality is just okay-ish and then you can actually do a lot of, uh, you know, ML-based workload uh, behind the scenes, that is fine. But if you use some highly sensitive stuff, lots of sensitive data, lots of data you really care about, you know, I would say for the sensitive ones, probably use the traditional ways, right? But to put them, map them into the schemas, put them into separate columns. So if there's, you know, very uh, important data you're dealing with, right? Even if it's not PI, you probably want to do some validation in there in addition to just check if it's a JSON data type, right? So to make sure the column is in there, certain things can't be empty. You know, that would give you much better quality later on in this design. Okay, that's the end of the session. I hope you found this very useful. And you thanks very much and see you next time. Go, go, go.